Hello, let's go over the answers to quiz two. Okay, so uh, the, your order might be a little different than this one. It always randomizes the order. All right, Travis Stan, 2015, values are in millions. So what that means is that's 1.2 billion. Okay, so we can just do this one in a calculator. We're just going to add up it's C plus I plus G plus exports minus imports. So 1,200 plus 500 plus 900 plus 400 minus 500. We get 2.5 billion, which is that answer right there. We don't count the black market spending. Okay. Largest portion of the CPI, this is housing. It's the largest portion of your budget. Um, even if you live where somebody else is paying, it would still be the uh, largest amount if uh, if you were to add add that in and then calculate that somebody else is paying that for you. So anyway, housing is the highest um, part of the consumer budget, so it's the consumer uh, biggest part of the consumer price index. You could see that in the book or you could have found that uh, somewhere on the internet or just look at the breakdown of what's in the CPI. Okay, this guy. Let's do the math here. So what we want to do. With CPI, we're going to keep the quantities the same. So it's we're going to multiply 12 months of rent times 500 bucks. Okay, and I'm just going to copy that formula all the way down. And over here, it's $600 rent times 12 months. All the way down. And now I want to add this up. So it's sum of this. So calculate the inflation rate. Okay, so it would be this guy minus this one. The formula is new minus old over old. And we're going to divide by the old. And we're going to multiply that by, um, by 100. We'll round it at 16%. Okay, so that's a 16% difference from here to here. Uh, nominal GDP is an imperfect way, so it's not a perfect way. It does not include inflation. It is not difficult to calculate in the real world. Um, it does capture new economic production in within a certain time frame. So it doesn't capture all economic activity, but that's the best answer right there. Uh, nominal GDP per capita using the experience expenditure approach. So we're just going to um, add up all these like we did before. So 5,000 plus 3,000 plus 4,000. Um, and it's plus exports minus imports. So these cancel out to zero. And then this is this is nothing. So we're dividing it by 10. Okay, so 1,200. And this is a poor country. Okay, so not to get the GDP, the nominal GDP, and then divide it by the people, number of people. What's true about full employment? It's not a fantasy. It's not zero. Um, it's that one. It includes people who are part of the labor force and are frictionally and structurally unemployed. Actually, the following is true about deflation. Deflation is when the prices are falling. Um, holds back worker wages. So deflation's happening, makes it hard for workers to get raises. So that's the right answer. It's not always good for the economy. No, it does not help an economy grow. Usually usually happens during a recession. An increase in nominal GDP indicates economic growth. Um, no, this is false. Could be caused by inflation. Which person is not counted? I am counted because I, I'm employed to talk to you about this stuff. Entrepreneurs are counted. A professional soccer player is counted. It's this one, elderly relative person. Um, calculate U3 official unemployment rate. Okay, so here we don't want to count these guys, these guys, and these guys. Subtract from the population. That gives us a labor force of 100. Shouldn't be a link. Um, it counts as uh, 100 million. Or you could take employed plus unemployed. That's also 100 million. So it's just the 
unemployed part of the labor force divided by the labor force, so it's five out of 100, so it would be 5%. Okay, that is that quiz. Let me know if you have any questions.